show you another part of my lesson here, which is many, you know, many of us start with some vocabulary, whether you're teaching history, social science, um, you know, uh, another language, right, science courses, you want to kind of front load them with terms that they might not know. However, you know, one of the challenges I often found is how to teach vocabulary, right? Um, I, and I remember teaching, uh, even at the elementary level, when I used to teach uh, fourth grade, it was very traditional. And even when I was a student, right, to get the word on the Monday, it was like 10 words and we had to uh, write them down, find the definition, fight the parts of speech. And on Friday, we had a test. And I always felt like, you know, am I really learning words? Am I really learning new words? And so what are different ways, especially if I have, you know, a non-English speaker, or if I have kids who are more advanced, and like these, I don't know these words. Uh, what else can we do with vocabulary? Yeah, so something that I really like um, for both of the both the, the kids that are beginners and the ones that are kind of ready to, to move on is helping them to really understand what it is and what it isn't. So using examples of what the word you know would represent and then non-examples. Um, something that can help with that is looking for any cognates, building up, you know, is there any kind of relationship between the, the target word and what they already know in their, um, in their home language or languages. So cognates, I think are really, really um, important. That makes them feel also um, heard and, and that, that, what they bring, you know, is valuable. They already know things. Do you have something for us? Yes. So in fact, I'm going to just jump right in there because, um, you know, I'm, I'm a second language learner, so I can relate to my students. And I, I constantly went back and forth between speaking Spanish at home and then English at school. So there was a lot of words that, you know, I would say, oh yeah, that sounds familiar. But if I'm a teacher who doesn't know the language that the students are, might bring, right? We have all, students from all over the world. Right. But if you have students, especially with this, you know, who are Spanish speakers, we know that there's a lot of connections there, a lot of the cognates. And so you don't have to figure this out. You can give your students this tool. So I love this. It's like a dictionary here. And so, you know, here I can put in. Yeah. Uh, what was that first word? I think artificial. artificial. Yeah. And so if I put, you know, the word artificial there, uh, guess what? It's the same word, artificial, right? And the kids can then teach you, like, oh, you know, imagine, right? Like how powerful that is to turn it around, say, okay, class, um, are there Spanish cognates? They might not even know that word cognate, right? Let's let's play with this. This can be, again, I love going into the classes that are dual language because I'm amazed at these little 10-year-olds who now can speak these two languages, right? Whether it's English and Mandarin or... And wow, right? They're going to be leading the world. So I can go here. I could show them this rather than me looking up all of the words in the cognate. How the students do it, right? Like what? What other word on here? Okay, the other word was monotonous. monotonous, right? Okay, let's see if there's a cognate for that. Oh, there is, right? And so again, we want to. We want to. As I always tell the teachers, our goal is not to make our students monolingual. <laughs> Right? We don't want to make up English only. That, that used to be a thing, you know, uh, when mm -hmm. I was growing up and, and my parents, they were told, you know, stop talking to them in Spanish. You're, you're slowing them down. And now we know, no, it's quite the opposite. Right. In fact, uh, when you know the two languages, your brain just works harder and it actually gains a lot more knowledge that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, that's just one little activity we can have. Uh, any other activities that you might do with uh, with vocabulary? Well, something that I have learned along the way, I, I mean, I used to, when I was first teaching, starting to teach, was just, okay, you just need to know the word, we're going to practice the word, and then we're going to move on. But really, it's about using the language. If I I'm gonna, if I'm gonna spend the time to teach them these really important words, I wanna make sure that they know how to use them. So we're gonna practice saying them out loud so that they feel confident in how to pronounce the words. We're gonna spend time and me giving example sentences, both that they can hear and that they can see written. We're gonna take time that they're gonna come up with their own sentences, maybe make a silly story, um, you know, using these words. But One 
them to feel confident that by the time we get to the reading or the writing, that they know these words, they can pronounce the words and they can use them so that when it comes time to doing, you know, these are, are really powerful words that will, will um, you know, transfer across content areas that they'll, they'll be able to, to transfer that, that understanding. Very good, very good. Well, as you can see, we have lots to say about vocabulary.